This is the first in a series of lectures on section 1.4 entitled Basic Proof Methods 1. In this video, we're going to discuss how you prove propositions of the form for all x in u, if p of x, then q of x. We're going to demonstrate how to write what's called a direct proof of such a proposition. So now this statement is supposed to hold for all x in u, and so we have to prove that no matter which x in our universe we select, the corresponding conditional statement p of x implies q of x is true. And so we have to begin by giving ourselves a completely general or generic x in our universe. We can't pick any specific one uh, that we find convenient. We have to pick a perfectly general one. And after we pick that gen general x, we have to show that the corresponding conditional statement is true. Now we know from the last two lines of the truth table of a conditional statement that when p of x is false, then by definition the entire conditional statement is considered to be true. And therefore the only case that concerns us is the one where p of x is true. So we have to assume that p of x is true, and we have to show that we can deduce through a sequence of logical steps that q of x is true as a consequence. So that tells us the overall structure of how we write out the proof of this thing. We have to start by saying, let x be an element of u. Then we have to say, let, or rather, suppose p of x is true. And then we have to ultimately deduce that q of x is true. And so the proof will typically look like the following. So this part gets translated into the first sentence of the proof, let x be an element of u. The fact that we're giving a direct proof means we now assume that the hypothesis is true, and so we put suppose that p of x is true. Um, and the very last sentence of the proof comes from the conclusion, which is, therefore, q of x is true. And in order to link the second sentence with the last sentence of the proof, we have to come up with a certain sequence of logical steps. So that's the part that's uh, perhaps a little bit more difficult. So this, this part, is, these three sentences are absolutely routine. The moment someone tells you that you're going to write a proof of something like this, and it's to be a direct proof, you should immediately know to do these three sentences. So now what comprises this sequence of logical steps? So two things that we can make use of um, are working definitions and modus ponens. The working definition means uh, for each concept that arises in the proof, uh, we should have a formal definition of what that concept means um, that we can make use of. So for example, uh, say one of the lines of the proof is, suppose that set E is compact. Well, you're supposed to know what it means to say that a set is compact. You're supposed to have memorized what the working definition of that is. And so if you know that definition, on the next line of the proof you can fill in um, what it means to say that set E is compact. Or another way that you might use it is, suppose a particular line in the proof was, um, in, our next, uh, in our next step we must prove that E is a compact set. Well, if you know the working definition of compact set, um, you'll have a sense of what it takes in order for you to prove that the given set E is compact, and so you'll write that down in the proof next. Now, modus ponens is a, a concept that we've already studied, so recall what it means. Modus ponens says um, if, if we know that A is true and A implies B is true, then we immediately know that B is true. So uh, imagine that um, in, in your proof you had written that some statement A is true, and suppose you happen to know that A implies B is also true, well, then you have the right on the next line in the proof to say, therefore, B is true. 
And why might you have known that A implies B is true? Well, that might have been an earlier line in the proof that you're currently writing, or it might um, be a line in some proof that you've proved earlier, or someone else has proved earlier, and you're just simply making use of it. Okay, so that's how modus ponens gets used in your proof. In our next video, I'm going to talk in a little bit more detail about working definitions. And in the video after that, I'm going to start showing you examples of how we put these ideas to use um, and show you some actual proofs.